Hello everyone, last week we saw together how to use the SD Excel model within Automatic 11.11 using the text to image and image to image tabs. Today I want to do the same by using the Refiner extension. So we are going to see how to download it and how to use it. It's very simple, so it's going to be a very quick tutorial, but hopefully helpful. The first thing we want to do is to initialize Automatic 11.11. So this is the main interface of Stable Diffusion and I assume that you know how to or you have already downloaded the new models from Hugging Face. If you haven't, you can watch my video on how to do it. And the first thing we want to do is to download the extension. As any other extension on Automatic 11.11, we need to go inside the extensions tab. We go into available and then we click on this load from button and then I have it installed already so I'm going to untick this but in your case if you don't have it you can Control F and look for refiner and this is the extension we want to install now again in my case I have installed it so I have installed here but in your case there will be the install button you just need to click on that once this has been installed you need to go back into installed and then you will see the new extension appearing in here exactly here as the web ui refiner make sure that this is ticked and then apply and restart ui something very useful um, you probably know about this but it's good to mention it if you want to know a little bit more about the extensions you can click on the link next to the extension like in our case we can click on here and then the main GitHub page will appear and there are some information about the extension, who developed and how it works and usually also how you have to install it. So in this case, we don't have many information, but it's telling us that the extension loads from refiner checkpoint only unit and replaces base unit with it at last steps of generation. For who is not familiar on how neural net works, maybe this is not very easy to understand, but for who is familiar with that, probably it's quite useful. Anyway, we'll understand this step by step today. Let's go back into stable diffusion. So again, apply and restart. And we'll see in the text to image, towards the bottom, we have this refiner. If we press on the little arrow, you will see that you can enable it, you can choose the model, and then you can decide how many steps you want to use the refiner for. You have this extension in text to image and image to image as well. So if you scroll down, again, you have it in here. How the SD Excel model works. So it's composed by two models. You have the base, which is standalone, so you can use it by itself. And then you have the refiner. The refiner is an additional part as the name says, is our refinement stage for improving the image generated by the base model. So you cannot use it by itself. We need to use it together with the base model. So what we were doing before, we were generating the image in the text to image tab using the base model. And then we were moving that image inside the image to image tab, swapping the model to the refiner and improving uh, the image generated with the base model through image to image. What we are going to do today with the refiner, we are just going to use one tab, which is the text to image. So we don't have these swapping tabs, which is great. We are going to use different percentage of steps for the refiner. So we are going to see different results together. And then we are going to compare the results using the previous methodology, so swapping from text to image to image to image, just to see the difference. I don't have much creativity today, so I'm going to use a picture from Realistic Vision on CVTI. So I'll, I'll pick this, uh, this one, I'll copy generation data, I'm going back onto my stable diffusion and I'll paste the data. Then I'll press this button for moving all of the settings across my text to image tab. I can keep the seed or I can maybe use a random seed and then I'm going to change a, a few things because this picture was generated with this generation data for Stable Diffusion 1.5 but we are using STXL so I'm going to increase the sampling steps to 30. I'm going to use 
1024, I would like to have a landscape image, so maybe I will reduce this a little bit like that. I'm going to remove these two Loras because they are not going to work. And then I think I'm quite happy with the, with the rest. Okay, cool. So for now, I'm not touching this refiner section and I'm just going to press generate. Obviously, the model I'm using as base model is the SDXL based. <laughs> And this is the picture I got with the base model only. Now we want to prove this picture, right? So what we can do, we are going down into the refiner. We can enable refiner. I'm going to use the same seed because I want to use exactly the same image and see how the refiner will improve my image so I can compare the results. I'm going to use here model refiner 1.0. And then I'm going to keep the default value, which is 20. What is this 20? This is the percentage of refiner steps from total sampling steps. Let's make things easier, actually. So let's use 100 sampling steps. Yeah, so let's assume that we are using 100 sampling steps. So when we use 20%, it means that for the first 80 sampling steps, stable diffusion is using the unit from the base model. And for the last 20 steps, which is the 20% of 100, right? Is going to use, is going to replace the unit with the unit with the structure of the refiner model. So with 100 was easier, right? Okay, I'm going back to 30 now, sampling steps, and I'm going to keep 20%. 20% for the refiner is what is recommended by who created this extension, and it's even written here, it's recommended to keep the percentage at 20% because higher values may result in distortions. And as I said before, the refiner cannot work alone, so you cannot increase the percentage to 100% to use only the refiner. But if you know this, if you want to scroll this up, it will stop at 50. Cool, so let's start with 20% in here. And I'm gonna keep 30 sampling steps so we can compare the, the two pictures and I'm gonna press generate. Oh, before pressing generate, you need to enable the refiner, don't forget it. And this is the image we generated using the refiner. Now we can compare the two results. On the left, you have the image generated using only the base model, while on the right, you have the one generated using the refiner as well. So it should be more detailed, ideally. So now keeping the sampling step to 30, I'm going to change my refiner steps to 10%, 30%, 40%, and 50%. I'm not gonna show you all of the processes because it will be too long. So I'm just gonna show you my results, which are this one. The outputs all look good, but obviously I have a preference, which may be different from yours. And I think it's this one. Now, the results can also change depending on the number of sampling steps we are using overall. So in my case, I'm using 30. What I'm going to do now for testing it, I'm going to increase the number of step sampling steps and I'm going to do the same exercise changing the refiner percentage steps. And this is the result. So as you can see, you can achieve different results using different sampling steps number, different percentage of refiner, they, all of them, they look great. And in this tutorial, I would like you to have an idea on how many sampling steps you may want to use and how um, much percentage of the refiner you want to use. Obviously, it's, it's good if you test it by yourself because depending on the input image, on the image you're generating, on the different descriptions and also different, you know, sampling method you're using, you can achieve different results. Now, I just want to compare these results to using the base model and the image to image tab. I'm going into image to image tab. I'm going to upload the image I generated using only the base model, which is this one. What I can actually do, I can go into PNG info, I can upload the image and then I can send to image to image. So we have all settled here, then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna change the denoting strength. So I just want to compare what's happening here. So you know what, actually I'm gonna use the plot for doing it. 
x, y, z plot, and I'm gonna use different denoting strand. So what I would generally use for the refiner, it's a value between 0.1 and 0.3. I want to try more values in this case, so I will go for 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. The higher the denoise, the more creative will be the result. The lower, the less detailed the image will be compared to the base model. So there is a trade-off, right? But that's why I was saying that the best values, the recommended ones are between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3, depending on how much you want to change the base picture. I'm going to generate. Oh, I forgot something really important, sorry. I need to swap the model to refiner. Okay, and then I press generate. Okay, this is done. So as you can see, the higher the denoise in strand, the more different is the picture, but it's still nice, it's more detailed, sometimes maybe too much detailed. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. Let's now compare these results with the uh, previous ones. So. I would say that obviously you can use both of them, they are both good. Using the refiner extensions, it's easy and <laughs> quicker because you don't have to swap from one tab to another. But with the image to image tab, it's not as quick, obviously, but I feel like you can push more for the details. Although sometimes pushing too much with the denoising strength is not very good. Again, it depends on what you want. So yeah, that's it. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.